Warm welcome, you're watching India Today. I'm Preeti Chaudhary and wishing all our viewers a very, very happy new year. I also want to tell you all that now we have officially entered a blockbuster political year. In next five months, India will witness a political clash never seen before. General elections 2024, the NDA facing off with the India Alliance. So over the course of the next 45 minutes, viewers, we are going to get some of the top leaders of the BJP and the India Alliance parties to come together and give out their mission 2024. And joining me this evening on the first day of a year, which will have massive political implications, is Pawan Khera from the Congress, Sudhanshu Trivedi from the Bharatiya Janata Party, Saket Gokhale from the TMC and Arvind Sawant from the Shiv Sena UBT faction. Biggest battle in the new year. Modi's pole pitch, Viksit Bharat by 2047. आज विकसित भारत के निर्माण को गति देने के अभियान को अयोध्या नगरी से नई ऊर्जा मिल रही है। Will the BJP ride the Ayodhya wave? Mandir dilemma for opposition. Hindutva versus caste census. जिस दिन मैंने कहा कि ओबीसी की आबादी कितनी है, उस दिन के बाद नरेंद्र मोदी कहते हैं, भाइयों और बहनों, हिंदुस्तान में एक ही जात है, गरीब। मोदी's guarantee versus Congress guarantee। मोदी की गारंटी मतलब हर गारंटी के पूरा होने की गारंटी। can the India Alliance get its act together? Now coming to the mood point, sir. Ye jo ab ladai hai, 2024 ki India Alliance banam NDA kaise dekhte hai? Mujhe lagta hai ki isme koi ladai nahi hai. I don't think there is any fight or contest in between. Ek taraf hai Modi ji ke netrutu mein NDA jo bharose ka gath bandhan, bharose ka netrutu. और भरोसे की पार्टी और दूसरी तरफ भ्रम का गठबंधन भ्रम में पड़ा हुआ विपक्ष और नेता तो छोड़िए कोऑर्डिनेटर तक के लिए भ्रमित हुआ विपक्ष सो इट इज अ क्लियर कट चॉइस बिटवीन भ्रम एंड भरोसा मींस अ कॉन्फिडेंस एंड सस्पिशन Sudhanshu ji, now the opposition, the India Alliance is building it as a direct fight of ideologies, of what their ideology, which is secularism, democracy, Samvidhan, constitution, against what they deem is yours, which is dictatorial way of functioning. Actually, by any parameters, I would just humbly like to ask them, can, ye, can they tell any one single ideological issue in which they have not changed their position from their inception? Can Congress tell me in last 72 years after independence, at least, forget about this 138 years, can they tell a single instance on which they have not changed their uh, stand? I just tell you, the caste census, who stopped the caste census? Till British time it was happening, and in 1951, who took the decision? Jawaharlal Nehru's government took the decision, and the Constituent Assembly took the decision, because the election took place in 1952, and... Now they are saying, and on what basis? Because they said that we will not do the caste census because ye angrezo ki food dalo rajneet ka tha. Now they should make it very clear. And then from Indra Ji's time, jat pe na paat pe Indra Ji ki baat pe mohal lagay ki haat pe. Then in Rajiv Ji's time, on 6th of December 1990, while he's speaking on the floor of the house, against Mandal Commission, Rajiv Gandhi said, Congress jat paat pe vishwas nahi karti hai. Hum to kehte hai jat pe na paat pe mohal lagay ki haat pe. Now tell me, where is your ideological position? On one hand, you want to say that you were in favor of Babri Masjid. You said that, Narsimha Rao said that we will rebuild the Babri Mosque. Now you say that you, are, you have not got the invitation. You have got the invitation, but you are not able to. So on the contrary, you tell one single ideological issue 
on which BJP has changed its stance in the 70 years. So that's why on ideological issues, there is a huge difference between them and us. The charge is, uh, Sudhan Shuji, the alliance till now, matlab, dhakka de de ke shuru ho raha tha, it was sputtering, is now coming together. They have already launched their first rally where the Congress comes into question. Um, all allies are coming together with a seat sharing arrangement date. Most of them are saying that ho jayega agle hafta das din mein. Then there is that 90 day yatra. So is there a sense of insecurity where it all, at least the alliance I is coming think together? I there is a sense of competition in the opposition just to capture the main space in opposition. Because everybody knows that they are not going to be anywhere standing in front of uh, NDA government and the towering and tall personality of Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi to keval is baat kiya ki bipaksh mein apni space bana le and uh, on this issue if they want to say that they are for democracy those parties who are having who has just become a petty family fiefdom and they are talking about democracy in which there is one party which has butchered the democracy during the emergency and they are talking about democracy when they talk about secularism they are the parties which has openly supported and said the Prime Minister of the Congress Party, uh, Manmohan Singh Ji has said, the Muslims should have first right over the resources of India. And the only instance, I challenge them, quote, a single secular country in the world in which the, the provisions of Sharia are having the constitutional status. In which there is a conflict between the Supreme Court and Sharia, then the Supreme Court judgment is trounced by the parliament in favor of Sharia. I'm talking about Shabano case. And they're talking about secularism. So I think whether it is democracy, development, national security, secularism or welfare of the poor, they stand nowhere in front of BJP, in front of NDA, in front of uh, Sri Narendra Modi. But Mr. Trivedi, the charge is also uh, from the uh, allies of uh, this alliance that, you know, the sense of insecurity was seen very recently this time where over 140 uh, India Alliance MPs were suspended in Parliament in a single session. Actually, you know, there was not sense of insecurity. Yes, there was sense of insecurity in their lives. Why? After the disaster and debacle of the three Hindi-speaking state, now those who were... The other partners of the so-called India Alliance have started flexing their muscles. They have got stars in their eyes. Now they can pull Congress and they can put a pressure on Congress. You remember the first day who took the lead? TMC took the lead. And Derek O'Brien in Rajya Sabha was the first, who is the leader of the TMC party. He was asked by the chairman that you leave and he denied. Then the house was at John. Again he was sitting. He was asked that you leave. He denied. Then the house was... I just ask if it is done in any institution. And next day what happened? Then Congress thought, oh, TMC has taken all the lead. Then what we should do? Then the next day they have started creating a ruckus. And when chairman, means vice president, has said now, now we adjourn the house and I just ask the leader of the house, means Piyush Goelji, and leader of the opposition, Yani Malikarjun Khadgeji, should come and meet me in my chamber. And leader of the opposition says, I will not come. Then at least our opponent should tell me that if in their own party, if somebody categorically says that they will not even meet the party president, then what they should have done. And second thing, even if they are having any problem, they should have come out of the parliament building and on the issue of criminal procedure court, which we have now turned into Bharti Nyaya Sahita and other things, they should have given a point by point their point of view and in front of the national media that these were our concerns and we were denied these concerns to, to be uh, discussed in parliament. But what they have done, they were doing the mimicry show, they were doing the laughter type of show, they were making a mockery of the institution and a very pathetic mockery or disrespect to the number two constitutional post of the country. So I think it also shows that if they have to be able to do it, then where they were the left side of the media was standing on the left side, and they were talking about the media. They were talking about the media, and they were talking about the media, and they were talking about the media, and they were talking about the So I have given point by point answer on their every allegation. But the charge is also, Mr. Trivedi, that, uh, you know, MPs who were not even in parliament were uh, suspended, the likes of the one from the DMK. Uh, one more thing. Uh, chairman has made it very clear that this has not been just because of this. Can you quote in the last two years a single parliament session in which they have not created a ruckus since last one hour and a half year. Every time 
they just try to find and uh, incidentally just before a couple of days before a parliament session some media report appears in the foreign media and they start creating ruckus in the previous parliament session you remember in Rajya Sabha floor leaders Sanjay Singh of Aam Aadmi Party and the um, Derek O'Brien of TMC thrown the book on the chair they have stood up on the table of the secretary general and they have torn the mic and thrown Harivansh ji, deputy chairman has written ki mere upar hinsak hamla hua hai, violent attack on me. Has it happened any time in the history of at least Rajya Sabha, which was considered comparatively, uh, you in a normal uh, thing, it is considered elder's house or upper house or this type of thing. And then it is continuously continuing. It means, and finally, when you refuse to even meet chairman, then I think your intentions become crystal clear. And there is no option left other than taking action. Moving away, the alliance says, Mr. Trivedi, that even though they are ideologically, they might be different political parties, they have one common ideology which the BJP doesn't share, which is to save democracy. For example, even the Congress starting its yatra right now, starting from Manipur, a state where the Prime Minister hasn't gone ever since with what has gone down, the Chief Minister, Biren Singh, continues to be the CM. So there's a certain sense of arrogance that is the charge that has been uh, laid at your doorstep. One thing I would tell the ideology and the Manipur both. On the issue of Manipur, government was fully sensitive and alert and active. Home Minister Sri Amish Shah Ji in the last session has given a clear-cut elaboration of all the things. But they have stopped the proceeding of parliament on the issue that it should be discussed in 267. Means stop all the work and discuss Manipur. Okay, if it was your demand, then why you agreed to discuss the Delhi, Delhi bill, National Capital Territory bill? Because now the politics is ahead and Manipur is left. Then they insisted that the Prime Minister should, should come and reply. Then they brought no confidence motion on Manipur. And today is the day of digital data. If you look, hardly 5% opposition is spoken about Manipur. And when Prime Minister stood up and he started replying on Manipur, they left. And again, I would like to say, on Manipur issue, you have brought no confidence motion. Uh, you have given a a notice against the central government and you have not given any notice against the Manipur government in the state assembly. This is sheer politics. So that's why I am saying and on the issue of ideology, I think if an alliance says that Muslim League is also the part of their uh, alliance, Badruddin Ajmal is also part of their alliance, Furfura Sharif Ke Gaddi Nashi, Pirzada Abbas Siddiqui is part of their alliance and Shiv Sena is also part of the alliance. ये मुस्लिम लीग और शिवसेना दोनों को साथ में रखने का गजब का आइडियोलॉजिकल वो है एक तरफ कम्युनिस्ट हैं जो कहते हैं रिलीजन इज एन ओपियम और कम्युनिस्ट एंटर्स इनटू एन अलायंस विद पीर जादा अब्बास सिद्दीकी द रिलीजियस क्लरिक द मुस्लिम क्लरिक ऑफ फुरफुरा शरीफ साहब गजब का इन लोगों का आइडियोलॉजिकल क्लैरिटी एंड वन मोर थिंग कांग्रेस यूजर्स टू से यह मुस्लिम लीग वो नहीं है जो जिन्ना ने बनाई है सरासर झूठ है सदर मुस्लिम लीग के जो चेयरमैन थे मोहम्मद इस्माइल or P.K. Poker Sahab, they were considered, you know what was the title? The title was Kaide Millat. Jinnah's title was Kaide Azam. And, and in Madras presidency, it was, it was comparing almost entire South India. 30 out of 30 Muslim League won under the leadership of Ismail, who was under the leadership of Jinnah and in which 95% Muslim voted for creation of Pakistan. And now you are trying to have a fig leaf cover that this is not that Muslim League. Same people, same person, same. And even in the Constituent Assembly, the same people stood up and say, we want separate electorate for Muslims. And after that, they said that this is necessary that the big brother will get the love of the little brother. Sardar Patel replied, we have given you the love of you. Now we don't want the love of you. You have to stay. There will be no separate electorate. That is what the demand was in 1916 in Congress. That was also the demand in the Constituent Assembly. That's why there is a lot of historical fact. Everyone knows ideology. Ideology is only one. There is nothing to do with the country. It's only that we get a little bit of support. The defense is that the defense is that they've come together, Mr. Trivedi, is to save democracy and save the Constitution. For example, the left that you spoke of has said that your party is appropriating uh, the Ram Mandir inauguration. It's unconstitutional to make it a political event, which you're making it. The other alliance partners are saying that you can't appropriate Ram and, uh, you know, dish out inaugural invitations while the party is going to be projected as 
you know, as, as a political event, the entire uh, occasion. Actually, I would like to say nobody can dare or think of appropriating Bhagwan Ram. Bhagwan Ram is considered, one more thing I would like to make it very clear. In Hinduism, Bhagwan Ram is not the son of the God or the messenger of the God or the representative of the God. He is God himself. Tat Ram nahi nar bhupala bhuvneshwar kalahu kar kala. Ye clear cut Ram Charit Manas mein likha hua. He is himself God. And who can appropriate God? You can just have a devotion towards God. And God will embrace you. But unfortunately, those who have took a stand, I remember in my childhood, Baat yaan se shuru hui thi ki it is a titan suit. Nahi. Ram huye thai ki nahi pahle sabit karo. Ayodhya ya thi ki nahi ki pahle ye sabit karo. और फिर एक नेता खड़े हो गए कह रहे थे इतने हजार कमरे थे तो यहीं पे हुआ था कि नहीं साबित करो और उसके बाद एवरी टाइम ये दे ट्राई टू पुट हर्डल इन द कोर्ट वो दैट टाइम बहुत लग जाएगा उसमें जाने में मगर उसके बाद हम हमारे लिए इट वाज नेवर एन इलेक्शन इशू इट वाज नेवर ए पोलिटिकल इशू इट इज अशू ऑफ भारतीय अस्मिता इट इज इशू पेंडिंग सिंस फिफ्टीन इसलिए जब हम दो सीटों की पार्टी थे कभी जमाने में जिंदगी में नहीं सोचा था हमारी केंद्र में सरकार आएगी तब भी राम मंदिर के साथ उतनी निष्ठा के साथ खड़े थे 303 में भी खड़े हैं मगर ये 414 के समय तो बाबरी मस्जिद के पास खड़े थे जो कहते थे परिंदा नहीं पर मार पाएगा वो आज कहते हैं इनविटेशन नहीं आ पाएगा लुक एट द चेंज ऑफ देयर आइडियोलॉजिकल स्टांस and look our our firmness of our ideological stance my final question mr trivedi is uh, if you just look at data and you look at numerics if the india alliance exceeds in seat one sharing one more thing i would like to add for ram temple go ahead sir that it is very much required not only for india for the entire world why because this symbolizes the highest human values duniya ka itihas bhara pada hai bhai bhai ko maar ke gaddi pe baitha beta baap ko maar ke gaddi pe baitha in that contrast if somebody will come and will put down the his head or her head in front of that temple to use yaad aayega ki pita ke ek vachan pe jangal chala jana dusra bhai uske saath jana aur teesra khada hu sar pe rakhna this is the highest jo believe nahi karte bhagwan ram main unse kehta hu bhai kabhi tum aisa aisa koi katha bhi tumhare yahan ho to bata do hamare yahan to reality mein hua hai that's why this symbolizes the highest human value in the entire world final question sir which i was asking you if you look at data you look at uh, you know the india alliance if it comes together where seat sharing is concerned then technically it could pose a problem you don't think so mr trivedi in politics it's not arithmetic we work it is the chemistry the chemistry the chemistry Otherwise, and arithmetic sir both no chemistry because okay in the last election of up in 2019 spbsp were together so we would have been routed nahi hua kyon i would like to say that those who want to just put on ye to ye kya hota hai na jo zameen pe nahi hote hain wo kagaj pe दो और दो जोड़ के चार देख रहे होते हैं और एक शेर है कि दो और दो का जोड़ हमेशा चार नहीं होता सोच समझ रखने वालों को कुछ नादानी दे मौला हम जमीन पे काम कर रहे हैं एंड वी हैव पुट अवर टारगेट कैटेगोरिकली क्लियर लास्ट इलेक्शन देर वर 224 सीट इन विथ एनडीए गॉट मोर देन 50 परसेंट वोट नाउ दिस टाइम अवर टारगेट इज फिफ्टी प्लस वोट तो भाई आपका हमारा मानना है आधे से ज्यादा हमारा है और बाकी में बंटवारा है उनका नारा क्या है 20 फीसदी हमारा है और 80 में करना बंटवारा है और राइट मिस्टर त्रिवेदी गुड लक एंड थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस नॉट मच टाइम लेफ्ट मिस्टर मिस्टर खेरा सीट शेयरिंग स्टिल अ डिस्टेंट ड्रीम वी हियर आई आई वोंट आई वोंट एग्री विद यू इट्स अ डिस्टेंट ड्रीम ऑफ कोर्स द बीजेपी होप्स दैट इट्स अ नाइटमेयर इट्स नाइदर अ डिस्टेंट ड्रीम नॉर अ नाइटमेयर इट्स समथिंग व्हिच वी आर ऑलरेडी Uh, way ahead in terms of our internal uh, conversations with our pcc presidents the uh, friday and saturday were two days where uh, all these conversations took place and the report would be given by the committee to the congress president uh, maybe on monday or maybe today which is a sunday so uh, let's see uh, but it's not a distant dream at all but the deadline of 31st december has been surpassed not really again because in principle we are all in agreement with uh, the broad contours uh, but you know within our own party uh, we have a very uh, quote and quote democratic process of taking into account opinions and views of our state units 
we don't impose decisions from from delhi on our state units so of course that 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 takes time and it is taking time you know you speak of uh, that takes time i'll i'll hark back to your uh, nagpur rally uh, mr khera on the same day where you kick started your 2024 campaign there were people within your party senior leaders like ashok chavan who openly said that uh, you know the 23 seat demand by uddhav uh, thakre shiv sena uh, will never be entertained so you know while we say that all is well clearly on ground it doesn't quite seem so priti i think the the congress party is the father or the mother of coalition politics in india so congress knows what a coalition how to stitch a coalition how to uh, ensure that the coalition survives how to uh, adhere to the coalition dharma all these aspects i think the bjp may find it difficult not for the congress well the bjp and the vajpay also understood it but uh, congress understands coalition very well much better than any other party but you know mr pawan khera the fact is that your allies uh, don't really consider you any more as the father or the mother of coalitions they'd rather look at you as a brother which possibly you don't see yourself as no i meant of the 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 concept of coalitions i'm not trying to be big brotherly about uh, about a coalition no that's not what i uh that that's not how it should be translated but uh, we understand how to stitch a coalition is what i'm i'm trying to say um all right so but will you know is there a sense of realization mr khera and uh, you know you can answer it whichever way you want um in let's say a state like maharashtra 2019 you had just one seat uh, in a west bengal two so um in states like this is there an understanding and a realization that the bargaining power of the congress cannot be much when we talk about uh, when we talk to our coalition partners priti we talk with an open mind with a large heart uh with a clear understanding of where we stand um, as political parties all of us each one of us uh it's not just data from the last elections it's not just data from a decade uh, decadal election electoral data no it's it's much more than that it is a very dynamic process so i wouldn't at this stage like to comment uh, in details about it but as i said for any coalition to uh, to take shape every single partner a stakeholder needs to have a, a broad open mind and a large heart which congress party and i'm sure even our partners have you know at a macro level mr khera if you actually look at it what do you feel will be the biggest challenges or which states will throw up the biggest challenges in seat sharing will it be a bengal or uttar I'm, pradesh you are already facing issues in maharashtra sir i don't uh, i don't see any any major challenge coming our way in terms of which state will throw a challenge well everything is a challenge politics is nothing but a, 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 you know a series of challenges within the party outside the party uh, within the state everywhere the challenges is not something uh, it doesn't have any negative overtones so uh, we are happy to uh, negotiate with these challenges but not tell me which are those challenges or which leaders or which states will be those challenges so it's, it's a very fine for. art of very fine art of priti of balancing the aspirations of our state units don't forget this is we are dealing with a national election the perspective has to be national uh issues would be national compulsions would also be national doesn't mean that we do not take into account doesn't mean that we do not consider the 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 strengths and the weaknesses uh of our state units but ultimately it's the india alliance uh, you know uh, mr khera and it's something which uh, you know the top leadership of the congress has also reiterated it's not the congress fighting the election but the india alliance so do you see state units falling in line with that absolutely it's it's just a matter of uh, uh, long drawn conversations believe me for any consensus within a party within an alliance conversations are important and those conversations are taking place in a very very congenial uh, atmosphere we are deep talking to each other uh, our allies also in a very very congenial atmosphere mr khera do you agree that you know with some of your uh, allies echo very openly in television studios now as well that uh, 
the Congress has been a little slow uh, in, you know, forget about seat sharing, but even looking at the uh, cohesiveness of this alliance, uh, where till now, of course, understandably, you were busy with the five-state election. Now you're embarking on a 90-day yatra. You know, political expedition should be welcome, but maybe not at the cost of an alliance. No, I would say, look, this is a, we are talking about a national party. You can only compare a national party with another national party. Regional parties have the advantage of maneuverability, of speed, uh, which national parties, whether it's the BJP or the Congress, unfortunately, do not have. But that's the nature of size. I mean, the size really is huge. We are present in every district of the country. We need to take into account several factors, state factors, local factors, regional factors, uh, factors, uh, of course, national factors. All these factors do take time in, in, in addressing and you don't see the alliance falling collateral to that because many would say that this would be an exercise, uh, the yatra that I'm speaking of the next 90 days, in building your own party unit, energizing your own cadre. What comes off the India alliance then? No, it's, it's not just energizing our cadre. It's the message. And the message is, I'm sorry, we, as you know, the message is not just the Congress message. This is the message of the Constitution, which all our uh, allies are also worried about. Believe me, some of the BJP and ND allies are also worried about. So if when we are talking about saving the constitution, we are talking about social, economic and political justice. We are not just talking about the Congress ideology. We are not just talking about the Congress agenda. This is the agenda of the opposition. This is the agenda of India. So I don't see how a yatra comes in the way or becomes an obstruction to any other process being adopted, being followed by the, by, by the India Alliance or by the Congress party. Yatra just fits into it very well. Okay, let me ask you one more question with the yatra. This time around, the second version... Uh, you know, your yatra is going to pass through states which have very different demography, topography, political landscape. In many of the states that you're going to pass through of the 14, you actually came in with a zero figure in 2019, uh, Pawan Khera. Would you think this yatra could change it so quickly this time around, coming at the back of a route in the Hindi heartland uh, in the state it's elections? A, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, several aspects to your question. Number one, uh, the word that caught my attention was route. It's not a route. Our vote share is not just intact, some states it's also gone up. All that we need to understand, comprehend and address is that why is the new voter not getting drawn to our message? And that is definitely, as we speak, definitely being addressed. Uh, the Yatra is, is a continuation of a process that started last year. Bharat Jodo Yatra was a process that was very well received uh, and this part of Bharat Jodo Yatra, which is the Bharat Nyaya Yatra, is it 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 uh, it elaborates on what what we spoke about during the Bharat Jodo Yatra. So definitely, it has its uh, it a, a lot of takers. The country needs this kind of a message. The country needs articulation of the concerns that our younger generation has. Our uh, every single Indian is going through these concerns. So I think the Yatra addresses those concerns and articulates those concerns very well. Mr. Kira, you talk about, you know, the narrative, you talk about the messaging. You know, one can't deny, one, you know, the fact that uh, whichever way one might want to look at the Bharatiya Janata Party, it's very clear on what they're going in this election with. They have a fixed prime minister face. Uh, they have a Wixit Sankalp Bharat plan, which ties into the La Bharati plan. Uh, they have the Ram Mandir. Uh, they have deliverance, the last mile delivery. All of that which comes together, you know, there is a message in there, uh, be it whether you like it or not. When it comes down to the Congress or the India Alliance till now, one big criticism has been that there is no one message or a single narrative that you've been able to build. The caste census is at least not sticking on ground with whatever little uh, empirical evidence that has come from it. Uh, communal angle where you've charged the BJP hasn't found traction. So one would say even starting the Yatra in Nagpur where the RSS headquarters is could have been foolhardy rather than audacious, sir. Priti Nagpur, there's a reason why we went to Nagpur. I don't know why there is an obsession uh, uh, and a direct connection between Nagpur and Sang. I'm sorry, Nagpur has a direct connection with Baba Sahib Ambedkar. It's the Diksha Bhumi. It's where the constitution of India, we all derive our inspiration from Nagpur. And our entire fight is the fight to protect the constitution of India. Where else do you think we would have gone? We had to go to Nagpur. So I don't know why Nagpur and Sang 
Uh, I okay. mean, the moment you think of Nagpur, you should think of oranges. But All right, Mr. Khera, okay, okay, fair enough. But address the first part of the question. At least, do you agree that there is no single narrative or a message that the alliance has come up with till now? The moment you uh, try and create the other, us versus them, the narrative becomes very clear. Hatred is a glue which attracts very immediately. Hatred is something which is very easily articulated, very easy to fan passions around hatred, very difficult to tread the path of the Congress party, which is of love, which is of, uh, which is of you know, harmony, which is of uh, addressing all aspirations, talking about every single group, talking about justice, talking about nyay. These are not easy concepts to, to, to A, comprehend, to B, articulate, to C, electorally use them. It's not easy. Who said uh, it was going to be easy? And we are ha absolutely fine with a difficult path. We are, uh, we are aware of the challenges of articulating these concepts. But the moment these concepts get simplified, people start relating to these concepts immediately. They understand that if they, the government is not agreeing to caste census, well, here is the data. Here, here is the evidence that there's been injustice to several castes. Uh, when Rahul Gandhi talks about 90 officers who are running the country, not one or maybe one is there's a 3% are OBCs. It makes sense. People immediately start thinking. So BJP's narrative is easy. Congress's narrative is difficult. And we are happy to tread the difficult path because that's, that, that's the path but, which you know, talks but, about every group. Right. But Mr. Khera, this is uh, at the cost of the voter, no? Because how do you simplify it for the voter? Because the voter is a little confused. They're not being able Nobody to figure confused. out what is Believe it that me. you're taking to them. Believe me, they are not confused. In our studios and in our boardrooms, in our political party rooms, maybe we get, to, we get a feeling that people are confused. Go and talk to people. I, uh, you know, in Rajasthan, in Madhya Pradesh, in Chhattisgarh, we may have lost the election, but talk to people. They are understanding what we're talking about. But of course, in, in the heat and dust um, and the loudness of our elections, a lot of messages get lost. But messages of Bharat Jodo Yatra stick. They have a resonance even today. And believe me, you will see the resonance of the part two Yatra also very loud and clear in the, in the weeks and months to come. The question which is uh, often dogged your alliance, uh, Mr. Khera, is that who's going to lead it? Now, in your last meeting, you had somebody like Amamta Banerjee, supported by, the, by Arvind Kejriwal, mooted the name of uh, Mr. Kharge. However, your own party is not in, seemingly have oh, not Mr. echoed Kharge the same responded to Mr. Kharge himself responded to it, it immediately, so I don't see uh, any reason for me to comment on it. Uh, in, 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 in any alliance, in elections, in politics, in any party, it's, it's the base uh, and not the face which matters. It's the kind of issues that you raise that matter. It's the kind of resonance of those issues that matter. I think it's very premature to even start talking about this. Would the India Alliance actually go into this election without a prime ministerial face, Mr. Kera? I think the question to be asked is that... Uh, what are the issues that India Alliance will, one, two, three, four, five, what are the five issues on which India Alliance will go to the people? People want to know about issues, enough of a face. We've had a face uh, for 10 years, for God's sake, and what has that face done? <laughs> now, many would turn around, Mr. Kera, and say that uh, the Congress has been trying to prop up a face for many years itself in the form of Mr. Rahul Gandhi. Which I remember 2004, before the elections, similar questions were asked. Uh, not, there were not many channels then, but whatever channels we had, this question would be asked to everyone. Who is your face? 2004, oh, there is a solid charismatic face of Atal Bihari Vajpayee. Who will counter Atal Bihari Vajpayee? What happened? This country is too wise to get caught in this debate of which is your face, what is your... That's not what the people are interested okay. in, believe me. Okay, I'll ask you last two questions. What's going to be so different which wasn't there in 2019? You spoke of NAI in 2019. Nobody, you know, there was no traction for that. You're talking of NAI uh, in 2024. What's different in this election? Preeti, 2019 was not a normal election. You know, the events that uh, preceded the elections took care of everything else. I mean, that, that they, they overshadowed... Okay. Every concept, every campaign, every other issue raised by any other party. 
So we cannot compare 2019 with any other election which took place in the past or which will take place in the future. Okay. The the concept of Nyai after Bharat Jodo Yatra and now through this Yatra gets further clarified, gets further defined. Uh, and I think if you dovetail uh, uh, Nyai with with census based on caste, on numbers, everything for, fits into the jigsaw puzzle. Everybody starts understanding what we are talking about. You know, my last question, sir, we go away from, you know, let's not talk about the, the, the social narrative or the social fabric, but when you look at the political fabric, there's a clear divide. Uh, there is a north-south divide, especially for the Congress. You s don't seem to be speaking the language of the Hindi heartland, at least as, as of now. Congress in the south, clearly much stronger than Congress in the north. And now with the Ram Temple coming in, uh, your yatra is going to be traversing that steam landscape. Preeti, in the north, the so-called Hindi belt, if the Congress's vote share is 40-41%, and we are strong in the south, doesn't that make us to be the strongest party, pan-India party in the country? So when you talk about data, you just talk about BJP. The, on the contrary, my question is the BJP is only strong and uh, that too, it has a very solid rival in the Congress party in the north and BJP has no presence in the south. So that makes BJP a weaker party than the Congress. Well, right now, at least perception-wise, it doesn't seem so, Mr. Khera, but... Uh, but data is what yes. counts, no? 40-41% okay. in the north and very strong in the south. That makes us one strong pan-India party. <laughs> All right, sir. We're going to leave it at that. Uh, we wish you well, but uh, thank you for taking thank the time you. out and joining us this thank evening. You, thank you, Mr. Gokhale. Um, all well with the India Alliance is uh, going, at least where the seat sharing is concerned, you seem to have passed your deadline of 31st December. Yeah, we uh, have. And I mean, the seat sharing talks have been going on for a while, you know, ever since the India meeting happened. And like I said earlier, you know, the thing is that there is already existing seat sharing in many states. I mean, if you look at Maharashtra, there is Congress, NCP, Shiv Sena, they've been in an alliance. Congress has been in an alliance with the DMK in Tamil Nadu. Similarly, in Jharkhand, in Bihar, it's the JDU, RJD and Congress. So it's not that, you know, we have to start from scratch or start from a blank canvas. There were already existing alliances in most of the states. So it's just a few states where things needed to be ironed out and that's about it. But is there a sense where the, you know, allies are concerned uh, because we've, you know, we've been speaking to a lot of uh, uh, ally partners and there, there, there's a fatigue that seems to be setting in. There's a sense of impatience because right now, um, at least where the Congress is concerned, the sense or the perception is it's really not in a hurry while the time is running out. No, you know, I think uh, things changed a lot after the last India meeting, which happened on 19th of December. I'm pretty sure the Congress party leadership also has understood, has realized the urgency of getting seat sharing done and sort of putting, you know, us putting together a cohesive campaign. So I I personally don't think that, you know, this notion that they're not in a hurry is true. Uh, everyone is working together. Everyone realizes the, uh, the urgency. And, uh, you know, accordingly, we have, we, have, we have worked things together out on that front. But, you know, uh, the Congress now is embarking on a 90-day yatra, um, you know, an exercise uh, in self-indulgence, uh, you know, a uh, political expedition, if you might want to call it. Do you see this at the cost of the India Alliance, that maybe this is the time to strategize and come up with a cohesive narrative and a plan? See, I don't think that, you know, these two are sort of mutually exclusive. I think, you know, Mr. Gandhi is doing this yatra and, you know, it is a form of election campaigning. I mean, he's going to be traveling from what I've heard. Uh, through the media, through different states, uh, going from west to east and uh, west to the northeast. So, I, I mean, I, I, do, I wouldn't see this as being necessarily a, a, a non-electoral exercise. I mean, elections are coming up and he most definitely will be campaigning through this period. And at the same time, it's not that, you know, it's, you know, the Yatra is the only thing that is going to be happening. In West Bengal, for example, we've already started our campaign since early December, late November, early December. So, you know, in West Bengal, as our Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee has said, that TMC is the party that is going to be fighting the BJP in West Bengal. And uh, the TMC, we have already started work on the campaign. I'm sure it's happened in a lot of states. I'm sure DMK has started a while ago in Tamil Nadu. I'm sure RJD JDO started in Bihar. I'm pretty sure Samajwadi Party has started in uh, Uttar Pradesh. 
So I think this yatra is 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 complementary to all the other election campaigns that are being conducted by different parties in different states. Do you do you think, Mr. Gokhale, that the pressure or the hurdles will be posed by the local unit of the Congress Party? Because you know the Congress Party till now is used to playing the mother or the father of a coalition, and now the allies, understandably, uh, would want it to play be on equal keel. You know, a brother or a sister. And that's not really how the states units see it. And I'll give you an example. Um, in Maharashtra, the Shiv Sena has demanded 23 seats. A local unit from the likes of Mr. Ashok Chavan has outrightly said that's not going to happen. The Congress wants eight seats in West Bengal. Your leader, Mamta Banerjee, has clearly stated that it is only but the TMC that can defeat the BJP in Bengal. So how are you going to maneuver all of this? Well, I don't think because, see, as uh, I, I remember uh, Mr. Sanjay Raut of the Shiv Sena giving a statement very clearly that the talks, you know, as far as seat sharing goes, as far as the alliance goes, are being conducted by respective leaders of parties in Delhi. So all of this is happening at a very centralized level and every party and it, every, it is the job of every party to work together with their state units or their local units and sort of make them understand that, you know, these elections are being fought in a spirit of cooperation, where it's one party on one seat, one candidate versus the BJP. And, you know, it's it's all in our party. It's completely fine. And, you know, we're all on board with the India Alliance. I'm sure the other parties are. And I'm sure the Congress leadership also will sit down with their state units, will have a discussion. I'm pretty sure they'll convey the same to them. Um, you know, when you talk about messaging and a narrative, uh, Mr. Gokhale, if you turn around and you look at, let's say, uh, the Bharatiya Janata Party, whether you like it, accept it, dislike it, the fact is, it's very clear messaging. They have a firm prime minister face in place. Uh, you have something like the Viksit Sankalp Bharat Yatra, which ties into the La Bharati last mile delivery. Then you have the Ram Mandir uh, in January. There seems to be very pointed, clear narrative. And on the other hand, the India Alliance seems to completely lack that. What is the narrative that you're taking? What's your message to the people this time? So the message is very simple. I mean, for example, if we talk about this Viksit Bharat Sankal Pyatra, it's quite unfortunate that this is a government program. Technically, it's being done with taxpayer money, but the BJP has turned that into their own campaign. Uh, so, I mean, this is this is a clear misuse of taxpayer money. The, the 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 public machinery, but let's not get into that. The BJP does not have any intention of fighting the election fair and square. They, they've they brought the election commissioner's bill as well. So we know that's not what they want. But as far as the narrative goes, look, a Ram Mandir is not going to take away the fact that people are unemployed. You know, a Viksit Bharat Sankal Pyatra, BJP going door to door and saying Vikas ho raha hai, progress is happening, is not going to reduce the gas bill, the LPG bill of people. It is not going to make tomatoes cheaper or onions cheaper for them. It is not going to reduce inflation just because the BJP says so. Because even after the Viksit Bharat Sankal Piyatra van goes away, people are going to go to the market and they're going to pay whatever the market rate for sabzi and other things is. So the narrative is very standard and very clear across this country. Unemployment, price rise and a general sense of economic despair has plagued the people. The BJP has made several promises. Prime Minister Modi has not been able to deliver those promises. So, you know, and, and and I refuse to accept the argument that the BJP has its messaging and everything in place because they don't. They, you know, in the recent assembly elections, we've seen the BJP taking union ministers, making them contest as MLAs. You don't even know what candidates they're going to put up on what seat. The BJP also, when they suspend 146 MPs in parliament, I'm sorry, but that when a party suspends 146 India MPs in parliament in the last session before the elections, that to me does not look like a very secure or confident party that's going into the elections. So the BJP might think the messaging is clear, but this Ram Mandir messaging they've used since 1993. There is an expiry date for everything. So I personally do not believe that when people are unemployed, people are starving. BJP mm -hmm. can again latch on to the old Ram Mandir issue and it's going to help them like it helped them in 93 or even after that because now people have moved on. It's a new generation. There are new issues. They can't keep flogging the same old issues like over and over again and expect people to keep voting for them. My final question, Mr. Gokhale, is a question that uh, has been posed many times uh, to many of your India allies and that is India alliance versus who? 
You have the Prime Minister on the other hand, your own party leader uh, in the last meeting had mooted the name of Mr. Kharge, which was turned down by Mr. Kharge himself, along with other allies like Mr. Pawar. No, it's not a question of both of us. Like I have I've constantly said and we have constantly said that there is no, that's what Prime Minister Modi wants. He wants it to be him versus one face so that the dirty tricks department can start with edited videos and targeting that one individual. We're not going to give them that benefit. So in Bengal, it is Modi versus Mamta Banerjee. In Tamil Nadu, it's Modi versus MK Stalin. In Delhi, it's Modi versus Arvind Kejriwal. In Bihar, it's Modi versus Nitish Kumar, Laru Prasad Yadav and Tejasvi Yadav. So let Modi come to our states. Let Modi come and, you know, his narrative of, you know, I'm the king and, and, and it's me versus who. It's Mr. Modi versus 28 leaders of 28 parties. Now it's up to Mr. Modi to devise a campaign for every state. And, and he doesn't really have much of a knowledge because let me remind you, all the states that we're talking about, every party in the uh, India alliance, except for maybe one or two, we're all ruling parties in one state in India. So let Mr. Modi come and in every state, the dominant party, the leader of that party will be the face against Modi. Let's see how Mr. Modi fights 27, 28 strong national leaders together and wins the election. All right, Mr. Gokhale, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Uh, good luck. Uh, you know, it's going to be uh, a, a big year coming ahead, except, uh, you know, especially the next few months there. But uh, thank, thank you, you for joining us uh, and uh, have a good year ahead. Thank you, sir. Thanks, you too. Thanks. Bye. Of course, coming at the back of the Nagpur rally and right before that, uh, hearing all not very well with seat sharing stocks between the Congress and your party. See, there is no problem as such as it is being proclaimed in outside. I don't think there is a sin. It's, you know, democratic functioning of the parties. It's not a dictatorship. So if someone expresses his opinion, doesn't mean he is guilty. So you know, there's no problem about it. Let, let someone express what is there. If he's making his heart out, what's, what's the issue? The leaders of these parties know what to do. And therefore the Honorable Sonia Gandhi ji, Rahul ji, Sharad Pawar ji, Honorable Uddhav ji, all these uh, our leaders, they know what to do. So therefore somebody at the bottom level speaks something. Let him hint out what does it make, what difference it makes. So unless these three leaders come together and say something, nothing is authentic by anyone, let, even from my side, on the sharing of seats and other things. Nothing is there. You are waiting for a crack. Don't worry. Wait for the crack. Crack will not be there. <laughs> no, it's not. Nobody, sir. Nobody is quite waiting for it. But Mr. Savan, the question is, you know, you talk about some leader. Now, it was echoed by Mr. Ashok Chaban. He's not a small leader at all, sir, where the Congress uh, is concerned, especially in Maharashtra. Now, for him to say that there is no question that your party's demand for the 23 seats in the seat sharing arrangement will not be met. Now, that's not small talk, sir. And what did he say? What did he say? He, well, see, if you ask me, because Ashok Chavan was the former chief minister of the Maharashtra. He's a leader of Congress. Definitely, it has to be taken seriously. But the, their leaders will take it on. Why we should disturb, get disturbed about it? Issue is that they should not forget. In the 2014, they had hardly four or five uh, members of parliament were there. In the 2019, only one was there. Don't forget that. You don't, should not forget the plinth, the base, should not forget. Right now, in the parliament from Maharashtra, Congress has got only one member of parliament who uh, with the bad luck has expired. But he too was belonging to Shiv Sena. Don't forget that. He was a Shiv Sena MLA and then left party, joined Congress, got elected. It's okay. Still I say it is a Congress. So he had, they had only one. What, what is our aim? Is our number is our aim or to achieve the power at the center is our aim and if they top power to it achieve the power at the center is our aim and we do not want the present regime to continue in the center in that case everyone has to sacrifice don't forget and therefore uh, you you have experienced presently what has happened in Madhya Pradesh what is happening in Rajasthan so by expressing adamant way what we that that will not be the it will not lead to a fruitful results. So why not keep control? Whatever you want to say, say to your leaders, say to your bosses who are there. Why to why to come in the press and public? 
So therefore, action and reaction goes on Islam Newton's law. Not to worry about that. But Mr. Savant, you seem to suggest that the sacrifice should be made by the Congress because, uh, like you pointed out, 2019, only one seat in uh, the state of Maharashtra in the Lok Sabha elections, a complete rout in the Hindi heartland in three states of Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh. Uh, so you, you seem to suggest that the Congress is in no position to dictate terms to you. Nobody should dictate. See, you can't dictate like this. By dictating, what will happen? You tell me, what will happen? What the ruling party, present ruling party wants, or you can say desire, that there should be wreck, there should be breakage, there should be crack in the alliance, that they would achieve by doing such things. So therefore, keep control, keep mum, let the party leaders come together and decide it. They are competent enough, they are matured enough, and when you want the democracy, in this country is to survive further and if you have to protect the constitution of India, keep mum. That's the best thing right now. Let the leaders but, decide it. But Mr. Savanti, you also say that nobody should dictate terms and there needs to be compromise. So the question I ask you, Mr. Savant, now is do you think that your demand of 23 seats is justified in Maharashtra, where seat sharing with your alliance partner is concerned? Definitely justifying. Definitely justifying what is there. But still I say, Honorable Uddhav Ji Thakar is there, not to worry about it, why we should uh, discuss all such issues. We were 18, we contested 20, 22 seats last time, 26 were given to BJP. We, 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 so there is nothing wrong by expressing that we want 23. Expression is different, final results are different. So we have to wait, let the Honorable Karge Ji, Rahul Ji, Honorable Uddhav Ji, Sanjay Rao Ji, Sunia Ji, all those things are there. Those leaders will come together, sit together and finalize it. Okay. But in technicality, the dynamics are completely the opposite. 2019, you fought with the BJP. This time you're with this alliance. Then in future, what we are doing right now in India is not again a united. Is it that we are saying alone? What we are saying? Otherwise, we would have said 40 years. Ashish would have been 40 years. Don't, don't make a, don't ridicule it. We are saying together. We are not saying we are not doing it. See, the local party like DMK. What you will do with the Tamil Nadu? The DMK is dominant. But in Karnataka, Congress is dominant. Nobody else can demand. Telangana, Congress is dominant. They are ruling. So what? It's wrong in them. If the Congress should get more numbers there. More numbers in Karnataka. Maybe few numbers in uh, Tamil Nadu. Few numbers in Bengal. Few numbers in Maharashtra. When local parties are strong over there, so we have to accept that. But sir, to revisit that question, whether it's justified for your uh, party today to ask for 23 seats out of 48 in Maharashtra, is because in 2019, whatever you won, you won as a one-unit party, sir. Your party has been split. Your faction is not even in power. Do you think you can still demand 23 seats based on your performance, which was a united Shiv Sena in 2019? It is much stronger than whatever the wrong things were there, they only have the party. It is much stronger. The roots of Shiv Sena is that is the reason the ruling party could not conduct the municipal corporation election. Do you feel it is a democratic one? Answer me. I need an answer from you. When two years uh, almost, Mumbai municipal corporation, the largest municipal corporation of the country, elections are not being conducted. Is it a democratic, democratic functioning? Is it a constitutional functioning? They did not dare to take even the uh, Senate elections of the Mumbai University, just out of fear of the Aditi Ji Thakre's leadership. So what you talk about that? Therefore, if you say, we have no fear about that. We have become much more stronger than what we were. Last two question, Mr. Savan. Do you feel the Congress has been a little slow uh, in uh, seat-sharing talks because there seems to be, uh, you know, apprehensions and a bit of fatigue where alliance partners are concerned? And now they're going, embarking on a 90-day yatra. Uh, do you think they should be focusing on the alliance instead? If, see, if they do that, what is wrong, you tell me. Do they not have any voice to say about it? That is the difference between the present regime and us. Let them say it now. Adriyas Yatra was done till we got defeat in Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. So Yatras is to make people aware of the present situation. How people <laughs> come with us 
we should try our best. We should wish best luck to uh, Rahul Gandhi ji, who is doing again in Atras, not to south or south to north, whatever it may be. We must appreciate that. Show the courage that he is showing in the even present scenario. It's, uh, it's uh, really appreciable. Mr. Savan, does your party agree with your ally Mamta Banerjee or in Arvind Kejriwal that has mooted Mr. Kharge's name as PM face for your alliance? Or like a Mr. Pawar, you think best no PM face for alliance? Why, why, why sorry? It is very premature right now. But do you, have you ever asked these questions when Jai Prakash Ji and and moved, made a movement? Number of people were there who could have become the Prime Ministers. Mura, Vishwala Pratap Singh become the Chief Prime Minister of the country, what is there? It can't happen anything, and happen. Do not to worry about this. That is not an issue. We have a number of alternatives with us, unlike the present ruling party. Do they, do they have any alternative? Ask them. If not Modi, who is there? Ask them. Ask this question to them, then ask the question to us. Thank you, Mr. Savant. Wish you a happy new year and good luck. Well, with that, that's a wrap on this show, 2024. India Alliance versus NDA. Only five months left, and like I pointed out right in the beginning, we've officially entered this blockbuster political year. Lots is going to go down, uh, viewers. Uh, tighten your seatbelts.